Some of you may remember my pipe bender that I built a while ago. So this thing here allows me to bend 16 mil solid stainless bar using that big handle over there, that pipe. And I get a 32 millimeter radius around that central uh, piece of bar sticking up. Now, I need to make a circle and this is 19 mil, doesn't fit. The reason I need to make a circle is because I need a handle for the brake on the winch. Enter Jess's idea of chop up what was gonna be a fuel heating coil. This is like the equivalent of an industrial high heels. Isn't that cute, but look at this. Also <laughs> the audience today, who's participating. With little money, lots of support, Kiwi ingenuity and good old blood, sweat and tears, we're creating a community expedition and research boat built and run by volunteers from around the world because life is too short not to fight for your dreams. I took a stroll downtown this evening When I heard music echo through the night The same old songs that I heard the night before So I started running so I wouldn't be too late Yeah, so the original plan was to actually use a bit of straight pipe and bend it and every 30 mil do a bend and we'd get a slight dimple on the underside as we bend it around because it's not mandrel, it'll bend with a kink and that will actually end up as like grip handles but that's practically impossible. Which so would be very cool. It would be cool but it's too hard. So what we're going to do is use these preformed circles. These are all mandrels, so these are perfectly round basically. So what I'm thinking is cut down here somewhere and then cut down here, squash them together to create one, tug it together perfect circle. We found these at the Scrappy Road. Yeah, this was... This, um, this was at the Scrappy? Yeah, this was at the Scrappy a while back. Um, and we thought, because we, we want to heat the pickup, is that how you say it? The yeah. pickup out of the tank. Yeah, we um, have to heat the veggie oil, and yeah. we were thinking of this, put the pickup going down the middle, and essentially you're in a big puddle of warm veggie oil. I thought this would be perfect for it, but... But I was thinking, well, why don't we use this for the... the the anchor winch um, brake. Brake? Yeah. Um, handle, it's a handle isn't yep. it really? Yeah, yeah. Um, because it's such a great size, but also I was just questioning in my mind whether this was the right thing. And if it is the right thing for the tank, for the pickup, absolutely use it, that you think it needs to be tighter around the pickup because it's, yeah. it's quite spread, isn't it? Yeah, can I have the camera? I'll yeah, show yeah. you straight on the top. So, okay, imagine this coil of, so this, imagine this coil has engine coolant pumped in one side and it's pushed out the other side over here. So you've got a constant circle of hot coolant squeezing around this pipe. Now imagine this here is the fuel pickup. So it would be located sort of in the middle like that, sucking fuel from bang on in the center of this hot coil of stainless. I'm not 100% sure if this is tight enough to really heat this fuel. Do you have to have it at this diameter? What you're worried about is, uh, is um, are you gonna be able to get a smaller yeah. Curl, you know? Because this is formed with rollers, and I, and I actually don't know what the capabilities are. I don't know if this is as tight as they go or what. Like, I'm sure you can get variation, but I don't know what that variation is. Do you have to have a mandrel? Is that what he's saying? You don't need to have a no. clean cur curl, do you? Like Well, a mandrel, a mandrel doesn't deform the tube. So if it's, say, if, let's say if it's 20 mil here, it's 20 mil there. So it doesn't bend, like, kink it in. But this is going in a tank. Yeah. As long as it's not blocking or reducing flow, do you have to have it like a perfect, because they're hard to get probably, aren't they harder? So maybe we could find something to even make something. I was just thinking actually, sort of if we don't have to go down the road of needing it to be mandrel, we could make it. That's what I'm thinking. All right, maybe we just do that then. As long as it's not reducing flow, right? So, I think we've found I think you've found the solution. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. Now you can do all the hard work. <laughs> Thanks, darling. <laughs> Now, MIG is 100% the wrong process to use on this. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's a circle.
it'll be quite warm, but should we polish it up? <laughs> is that it? Yeah, that's a join. Wow, that is very cool. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Used to be a join. I can see it, yeah, yeah. yeah. The microphone should pick that up. The sign of good work is how much weld slag is left inside <laughs> the sealed pipe. It's funny every time you turn it. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Awesome. <laughs> so what are you using for the spikes? Uh, I reckon I can just use some 16 mil bar or something. We'll just cut three spokes. That'll be plenty. This is plenty strong. It's time. It's pretty steady. Yep. Should we weld on? Weld on. Weld on. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get three out of that, but I might get three out of that. That's strong enough, isn't it? And if I can't get it out, I've got two of those, so I can get it out of that, which is eight mil maybe. Hmm. The idea I had was like mount that and then, then use these flats to determine where the three hmm. things have to go, spokes have to go. Oh, nice. And I've got... Sort of there and there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got options in terms hmm. of size. My original thought was 16 mil, which I think... I think oh, wow, well, look at that. We easily get three out of that. Mm, yeah, yeah, but do you want to? Because you've got to weld that onto that. Yeah. You're saying you can do that without bursting through that. Well, with TIG, I can control it much better, so I think I'll be fine with TIG. Right. I'll maybe just tack it all together with the MIG and then drag the TIG welder up onto the bow where the bottle is. Because mm. I can't you move do the. It tomorrow morning, yeah, I can't. It's not so windy. Yeah, I can't move the bottle right now because the bottle's. There's wet paint everywhere. Mm. So, alright, so we'll go with 16. Because the other thought I had was these spokes, if we ever really need a haul on this, I was thinking you'd jam a pipe in and it would hook up onto the spoke. So so Dame's talking about like what what size to do these? Yeah. Like Do we go with the sixteen millimeter? Do we go with this, which I think is like maybe twelve mil? What do we go with? Well we've got some some thin stuff, but I think we ignore the thin. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Gosh, you wouldn't want to go too much lower than that, would you, if you're honing on it? That's probably quite strong there, because it's pretty small. Yeah. I'm thinking this is overkill. Yeah, okay, let's go with these. Yeah, but yeah. it is you, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to build the whole thing out of that, so... Okay, so let's go with these. Okay, okay. Yeah, I like that idea. All right. Let's under-engineer something. It's not under-engineering. Under mm. It's just right. <laughs> Which is the theme of the next month. So here's my thinking, we have to weld something up like that. Three spokes connecting that nut to that wheel that I've just made. However, that puts your hands quite close to the chain, so I kind of want to extend the nut away from where your hands are going to be. Introducing the Tri-Nut Nut Spacer, available where all good nut spacers are sold. I think that'll work. If you weld them flat, like if you weld that like that and just have them straight out, your hands are really close to the chain. Oh, so I was thinking if I space that up, well it doesn't matter how far up I go, but if I space that up and have them on an angle, it kind of, where the chain is, it separates where you're trying to grab away. That's brilliant, yeah. So, but... Uh, it sticks out, sorry, then it sticks out further, doesn't it? Yes, but you're... So you're going to hit it more often. No, but remember you've still got the, the, the big shaft that this goes to will stick out sort of yay far, and then this, so if it goes out in a way it stops you from smacking the shaft, you'll smack this, the rounded stainless. Imagine you're walking past and you kick it. So you're smacking something either way. Yeah, but would saying? you? Yeah, but would you rather boot this? Or would you rather boot a solid stainless shaft that's not going to move? Rather, oh wait, you know we can put, make a little. Oh, we should get a fluffy um, steering wheel cover. Yeah, like should. a pink sheepskin. Yeah, it's you know that um, stuff we use in the bathroom. Oh, the foam noodles? stuff. Yeah, noodles. pool noodles. Pool noodles. Yeah, we could yeah. wrap some pool noodles. If we put enough around and the boat sinks, we could we could <laughs> theoretically hold the boat up. So the bit that I'm stuck on is how do I get it even? What do you mean even? Well, how do the I, angle you mean? You no, could, how do I make these even so that this is perfectly centered? Oh, I know. I was, I was going to say, well, do you, do you have a little machine or something that you do that with? Oh, I've got an idea. Have, yeah, you, got yeah. a, have you got a disc of something that's bigger? Oh, for that this? Would, that would reach the end of that. I've got a disc that's bigger than this. Yeah, that would do, because yeah. then you could locate it, right? Here's a disc I prepared earlier. <laughs> that's great. <clears throat> yeah, so do that, and then if we measure in from here to here... Exactly. We can maybe it's even, isn't it? Maybe visual it that is way. Is that a new one? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, new. Yeah, perfect. Tape measure there. Tape measure. We could theoretically. Yep. 
So just by basically using a, a new disc and then just making sure we've got the same measurements on all four quadrants. So 40 mil basically is, if I get 40 mil everywhere, I've got that pretty much centered. So then all you should have to do is measure one and it should be the same as the, the other two. Yeah, and then that's as centered as I can on the inner. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh, okay, but the next question is, because the angle will make them longer, so we have to figure out how to do this. So get that centered, take a measurement. 85, and now just add 20 mil to each one. And from down? Yeah, because well, I'm gonna have to file this edge, yeah. will have to be cut on an angle. What did I say, 85? Yeah, it's pretty good. So 85, 95, 105, let's cut them all at 105. I reckon that'll do. Time to take it up and make it look lovely. New stainless bolts going everywhere where there's visible ability to look at the bolts and make comments like, wow, they look really shiny. In case people are wondering, the original bolts on this were stainless, but they were manky, so it's about 20 bucks to replace all of the bolts on the external sides of, these, of this winch, so it's worth it. I think it looks awesome.
Top dog, maybe you know I'm fighting that he fight Set in the picture ways of pixel for the points of light Then in the earth again we go and let him tell to hide Then in the soil again we tie and kill the game fly Hide till he hide, hide till he hide Here we are again, me boys and our hearts fly Hide till he hide, hide till he hide Here we are again, me boys and our hearts fly Roll away the mountain, started blood Like hell is flower, but beaten brown with my toes and up I'm from the dark, the mic, and I'm a fortune steady, mate I'm from the rock, inside side of my table, I die Hide till he hide, hide till he hide Here we are, give me boys and down, hide swat Hide till he hide, hide till he hide Here we are, give me boys and down, hide swat A little bit of paint got inside in the shaft, that's why it's tight. Normally it slides on quite easy. Not close enough to wind it in, but very close. That would look cool to find up. I can do that, and I agree. <laughs> 70, 80. I love this. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Click, click. Right, put this one on. We probably should shine this up now, eh? That's one of those, um, the funnest jobs ever, isn't it? Oh, I love it. I love assembling these things. Right. That goes on next. Uh, I need to go down and shine that up get rid of the old colour. It's all stainless, so that used to be concave, and I got them to skim it flat. And I don't know why they did this, but they've skimmed that to obviously like yep. dial it up. But it looks gorgeous. It's beautiful. So that goes on the winch, and that goes on the shaft, and you have two brake discs, one there, one there, with that in between them, and the fine thread clamps it all together with that wheel like that. Actually that's the first time we've ever seen it on there isn't it? So that's how we Ooh, yeah. look at you getting all nautical. That's awesome. Go away. Wow. That's a great design. That's fantastic. So it stops you smashing that. Yeah 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 I get it. I think we should call that the knee capper <laughs> and that's just the shin denter. I can't wait to get this all done. It's gonna look so beautiful. Although some people have brought up some, some interesting points in the comments though. They were saying that, you know, on this worm drive shaft, you've got those two discs at each end by the bearings. Yep. They were saying that their purpose is to fling oil around. So if you fill it up too much, they can't fling oil. So they actually work better oh, with not much oil in them. That's good to know, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, because you were gonna... Look, I was gonna fill it up. It's designed for a boat like this. They must have considered that it's gonna be slow, surely. The, well, the other side of it is that, and somebody else brought up a point which I thought was really good, it's a small box, there's so much chaos going on inside that box, yeah. the oil's going to get flung around yeah. regardless. You can probably tell Dame really has been looking forward to this job. So what he loves to do, this is sort of his his area really. Um, he's managed to learn everything else he needs to do on board, but this is what comes naturally to him and, and it really shows. So I'm glad he's enjoying it. And, oh, it looks just gorgeous.
while, so I thought I'd fly over. We've got our blasting bays right below us there, then brew peg, and then moving across the road, we've got the expensive shiny white boat area, then the marina and the launching ramps, the new extension down the end, and then looking back, there's quite a lot going on in the work yard. So a neighbor of ours is getting the mast put up. As well as the normal boats being launched. And then up the front of Brewpeg, I'm attempting to chop a hole inside a hole, obviously. Remember Dame added on this new fill plate uh, underneath the anchor winch to level up the deck but also give it some stiffening and strength. I uh, had to weld the holes uh, that go through on the deck below. Now he has to cut in so that the bolts will slide in easily. So the mag drill didn't work. My thought was use the 32mm annular cutter to find the centre and then swap that bit out for a smaller bit. I think it was 28 mil or something like that, just to basically plunge through and clear off. So I've still got a bit of a, a gap before I plunge through and do that cut into the, what is a 25 mil hole. Um, it didn't work. Basically, for some reason, the weld is harder than mild steel and it's just chewing out the cutters. Had heaps and heaps of lubrication in there to keep it cool and it just made no difference. It was just killing a cutter. So I gave it a go. Um, I think probably the next thing I'd try would be a die grinder with a with a um, like a tungsten carbide cutter and and just mow it out with a die grinder. However, I don't have a die grinder that's a six mil chuck or a quarter inch chuck. Um, I've only got a I think it's a one eight or a three point two mil. It's only a small one, um, so it doesn't have enough grunt to do that. What I do have that can fit a six mil chuck is my Who's Your Daddy wood router. And look at that, it's got a tungsten carbide cutter in it, ready to go. What I'm hoping is that the flat base of this will keep everything lovely and square and then I can just really gently nudge up to the material to take off. I, I have no idea if this is going to work. It may not work, but I think it's worth a shot. I'm going to call that the most successful bodge job that I have ever performed in the history of the world. This is what I'm looking at. Basically, it just ripped it out. It was absolutely brilliant. That was amazing. Let's go. The reason we're putting so much effort and treasure into keeping this winch alive is that if we were to buy an equivalent winch new, it would be about $10,000. With this one as it sits right now, it owes us maybe two and a half to $3,000. If it comes crashing down, yep, wash that, your toes. That's enough. <laughs> Let's just stack it down. Oh, okay. like, like that for now. Like that. That's enough working room. I suppose I have to make sure we put it on the right way around. What we need is more wind, really. <laughs> do you want me to do the driving, then you push? Are you right? I think I've got it. Oh, there you go. Just go down gently. And... Yep. Okay, you go there. Yep. Yep. Lift up. All the way down. Yep. We can shimmy it on the wow, ground. Wow, that is amazing. So come all the way down and I'll get rid of this. Okay, I'm convinced that's <laughs> good. It's nice to see something powerful enough. I don't know how heavy it is, but it's... Um, heavy? <laughs> yeah, it's not light. <laughs> right, bolts. I don't know if it's serious enough that we want to do. Should we just, should we just, put, should we just put one in? <laughs> I 
I didn't have to big enough. I like big bolts and I cannot lie. <laughs> wow. I'll, I'll climb down the bottom and push them up. And if you can I can do, do all them the same. You can do okay. a washer and a nut on each one. Okay, here, let's just put these somewhere else then. Uh, One sec. Yeah, the chuck the bolts down when you're ready. Yep. Oh. It's not lined up. No, you need to come forward slightly on the, the machine needs to come forward. Okay. No. Oh, hang on. It might work. Just go in there. Have you? S yep. Yeah. Cool. So close. Can you jiggle it or is it? Oh. <laughs> I don't want to try, I'll hurt myself. It's really close because it's sort of yeah, almost... Yeah, screwed. it's just like a tiny okay. two mil sort of thing. Where do you want me to go? Just straight forward. Okay. Forward if you can. How's that? It looked a little bit... Got it as close, isn't it? Try that. Yippa! Keep going, you're just going through paint now. I need you to drop it down a little bit. Yep. You got the, the washer on? Yep. yep. So let's get the far front left on, because that'll, that'll do it that way, you know. Can you see if it's lined up? Do we need to go any direction? I won't be able to know until you okay. get through. It looks all right, but all right. you won't know for sure until it's in. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, I need to go sideways a bit. Okay. Which way do you want it? That way, yep. Oh, there's probably a bit much. I'll Too push. much, I think. Yep. Okay. Yep, too much. I'll you hold it. it. Can you jiggle it, or is it still too tight? I shouldn't be lifting something this heavy. Okay, okay, just... Um... Oh, hang on, try that. Not quite, it's very close, though. Oh, hang on, I might be able to just whack it. Just try it? Yeah, hang on, I'm just going to give it a whack. Yep, it's through. Keep going, yep. Pow. <coughs> Coming on. Okay. Cool. This done? Okay. Right, do the bolts. Okay. You ready? Wait. Cool. Oh. Have What's a that? look at that. What's going on? Huh. Oh, the bloody repair. Of course, that's a different shape than every other corner. It'll only take two seconds with a grinder, I'll just get that flattened off. We don't put the bolt up, and we're putting it up because of these. You can't do it that way, you've got to do it that way. Um, when it came up, what we saw was when the washer went on, now it sits up. That's the weld that was fixed on the casing. So Mr. He-Man is going to have to grind it out so he can put it down. Okay, so the nut will fit like that. Uh, I doubt you're gonna get that washer in it. You've got no, to take too much of the weld out. I think eh? I'll clip the side off it. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. So with that, trim like that, the nut fits on top. And it's a perfect little match. Okay, here we go. Do you want me to turn it or is it your right? Then that has spoken for itself. <laughs> Wow, 
Wow, that's fantastic. Okay, I'll just I'll do the opposite corner. All right, here we see. Yep. No ways to go yet. Yeah. Just punching a boat. <laughs> okay, other side front. I will do, yeah. Two seconds. 
seconds. Let's get into the horse power zone. Okay, ready? Yo. Okay, a bit more. I think you should see some maneuvers. What? I think you should see some maneuvers. <laughs> maneuvers ceased. Alrighty. Oh yeah! <laughs> Don't make us rebuild this bloody thing a third time. That's up to you, big boy. <sighs> They're gonna rust, so I'll paint all the bolts and nuts and whatever's. Oh, done. Right, it's a cracker of a morning. Not too much wind, lovely sun, this is great. Time to get the hydraulic motor and the controls on the winch. Challenge I've got is this here is a bit old and manky. It, I can't see any knocks that's basically dented it to make it feel as if there's any issues. The spline looks okay. If I spin that round, I can see the spline all the way through down in there and it seems to be okay. Um, likewise, have on this side, everything seems to be nice. Don't think there's any dramas, but it's not going in easy. So, a bit of a challenge to figure out. It's a very tight and precise fit and after a lot of jiggling I managed to get the hydraulic pump to locate onto the shaft that's inside the winch housing, the worm drive shaft and then now it's just a process of sliding it back on and getting it up tight. Here you can see Damien's removing the excess silicon RTV, that's a gasket compound to seal the joint. And on goes the hydraulic motor control mount and oil fill port.
been an easy week. We've had one to three sandblasters going in the bays this week, plus needle gunning around us, plus the wind. Um, thanks very much for being so patient with us uh, trying to record this. Everyone has their own idea as to what's the best lubrication for these winches, and I'm no different. As a Kiwi, I like to, to stick to what I know. I couldn't get Marmite, but you know, Vegemite is pretty close for any Australians out there that are looking for a great quality lubricant for winches. There we go. This episode brought to you by Vegemite. Tastes as gross as it looks. No, I'm only kidding. We use this Molly High Load Grease. No Vegemite was harmed in the making of this video. So it's a bit unconventional, but some trawlers run 100% grease in their anchor winches and others run 100% oil. Some run a mix, we're running a mix. Um, it's basically because these, like I said last episode, these winches will often sit around for a long time before they get any work. Having some sticky oil like grease essentially helps to just make sure that everything's got some sort of lubrication before the oil actually kicks in and starts flinging around. I'm pretty curious about how much oil this thing's going to hold. So I've got a jug, quite a big jug, it's a three litre jug which is about, I don't know, 47 gallons. I've got two and a half litres in each one of these little canisters. Um, I'm gonna just essentially pour it in until it comes out the normal filler bung, just to sort of find out what the standard level is. Um, I did have a good think about the oil level conversation, um, and there was a lot of good comments about that. I'm gonna go with the standard oil level. Um, I didn't realise that those little um, flinger thingies, oil slingers, I didn't realise what their actual job was but it makes perfect sense. Um, they obviously sling oil up, great idea. So um, I will run it at a fairly low level, which, which is like the standard level. I call it low because it's sort of tipped back, so I think it's probably gonna have less oil than if this winch was horizontal. It's not a massive angle, it might only be, I don't know, 100 mil difference in, ter in terms of oil level, maybe more, maybe two or 300 mil, but I think it'll be okay. Um, and yeah, I'll just sort of keep my eye on it the first few times that we use it. Yeah, so let's press on, see how much oil this thing holds. So this hole here is the standard oil height that this thing should run. So as soon as the oil starts coming out of here, we know that we've got the right level in. We don't have a dipstick, we don't need it. It's positioned where it needs to be. So started with two and a half litres. This may take longer than I thought. No, no, please, I'll just, I'll just wait. I wouldn't normally do this, but because this episode has to be published before Christmas 2022, I have a plan. Vacuum the big grease bubble down into the sump. The issue is that this winch design doesn't have an air vent to let the air out as you put oil in. Plan worked. I saw a big wallop of it coming out here, but it's an air bubble. Doing it again. Right, so, big old air bubble coming out of the bottom here. There we go, now it's burping at the top. That's where it should be coming out. We've got two and a half litres in so far and we're still nowhere near the top of that. So time for contestant number two. Okay, just about ready to fire this thing up and see what it does. But I feel like it needs something. Something's missing. Oh, much better. Thanks, Nick. Right, time to start this thing up and see what it does. Okay, chain's connected. These are all tight, anchor is connected. Nothing underneath, no one or no thing, no safeties, they're all off. Uh, brake is on. Cool, I don't think anything's touching, we've got oil. All right, let's see what it does. We need to turn the main engine on. Oh dear God, that's a job for next week. <laughs> 